The build-up to the 2024 general elections has begun. Now, last week, the Independent Electoral Commission in Gauteng held a media briefing in Johannesburg just to give an update on the elections. Amongst others, the commission announced that the elections will be officially launched on the 24th of October 2023. And the first leg of the voter registrations will be between the 18th and the 19th of November 2023. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tambo Malokwan. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined in studio by Peter Moses, who is the Independent Electoral Commission's Outreach and Communications Manager in Gauteng. And he's here to speak to us about the Commission's state of readiness for the 2024 general elections. Mr. Moses, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. No, good, good evening, sir, and uh, good evening to your listeners and, and your, your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, I want us to kick start the conversation by just looking at uh, um, the latest developments within the political space, looking at the issue of the Political Party Funding Act, which now has been taken to court, you know, all these kind of things. And then, you know, on top of that, there's preparations for the elections for next year. Maybe let's talk about what the Act is and also the Amendment Act, in, just in general, and also what it pertains just for um, an ordinary South African. Look, there, there are two uh, acts that you, you have uh, uh, spoken uh, to. One is the, the Political Party uh, Funding Act, yeah. which really uh, uh, speaks to the funding of political parties using two funds. So one is for represented, uh, represented political parties that are funded through that act. But also there's a democracy fund that where people want to fund, if people want to fund our democracy, yeah. not specifically a political party, they can put money into that fund and that uh, fund, that money gets dispersed among political parties. So one is for political, represented uh, political party funds where you can, uh, a party must tell us uh, it has received these funds from you and this is how it is, you tell us those funds and we do that uh, quarterly. But there's also another fund where anybody can put money into that fund. That fund is distributed amongst political parties. That person would be supporting democracy. It's called the Democracy Fund. Now, that is the one thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that you, you may have spoken to is the issue of the Electoral Amendment Act. Act. Now, the Electoral Amendment Act is uh, uh, topical right now because that's the act that uh, 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 has been uh, uh, enacted by, uh, by Parliament and uh, signed into law by the President and it came into effect on the 19th of June this year. And that act speaks to the participation of political, part, uh, of political parties and independent candidates in the national and provincial elections. Remember previously, uh, independent candidates could only participate at what level yeah. during uh, local government elections or by elections. But right now that act makes provision for uh, independent candidates to now participate in uh, the national and provincial elections. Mm. I, I mean, so uh, how generally, how, how do we then, you know, distinguish, because normally how it works with political parties, it's simply not the same with independents. So hence now they're taking the matter to court. But besides that, I want to know the issue of the, what happens when people do not comply with the very same, you know, act that has been signed to law. Particularly, I mean, you've had issues with uh, political parties before, you know, in terms of declaring uh, donations and stuff. But what happens? Is there uh, repercussions for political parties for undisclosures of, of amounts? Yeah, well, as it relates to the uh, uh, funding of political parties, the act is clear on the processes and procedures that has got to be followed by the IC. But remember, in law or in terms of our laws, uh, the IC is not a, an institution that uh, 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 takes the responsibilities of courts. Yeah, yeah. We can only report as what uh, what has happened, and then the other processes that relates to our, uh, uh, <coughs> what we call criminal justice system will take effect. Mm. But. That's uh, as far as it goes. We haven't had challenges thus far. Uh, however, uh, what could essentially mean is that the you know the CEO or the fin a chief financial officer of a political party that has not declared its fu its funds that they have received, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the law that they should have declared those funds from hundred thousand above, mm -hmm. 
that uh, uh, finan chief financial officer may be the one facing uh, you know the law in, in regards to them not disclosing as uh, the law requires. So that really would be an issue, but we haven't had that, that challenge as the IEC thus far. So the, the, the current court cases won't impede on the preparations uh, from IEC's perspective? The current court cases uh, are in relation to the amendment to yeah. the Electoral Act. Uh, Section 57, remember previously, was uh, uh, precluding uh, a, a, a South African citizen from participating in elections and if they win a, a, an election as independent candidates or as individuals to participate in those elections and if they win they could uh, then assume office. That was the challenge and the court, uh, 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 constitutional court has addressed that matter two years ago already, in fact three years ago already, mm -hmm. that in fact uh, uh, that uh, aspect of the electoral, um, uh, electoral Act, Section 57 of the Electoral Act, was unconstitutional as it relates to only requiring for people to participate in local, in, in uh, national and provincial elections through a party list. That matter has been addressed. The matter that has gone to court is now the issue of two things. One, uh, the number of signatures that a party requires yeah. to participate in elections. Remember, uh, they must be, it must be 15%. Uh, of the quota for a seat in the previous elections. So in 2019, for instance, in Gauteng, the seat for once for you to get a seat in Gauteng would be like 48,000. So you must get si uh, signatures that are equivalent or more than 15% of those of the 58,000 for you to participate as a candidate in the uh, uh, Gauteng legislature for a, Gauteng, a seat in the Gauteng legislature, whether you are an independent candidate or you are a new party. That is the issue. You understand uh, now, <clears throat> but the, the same principle applies for you if you want to uh, represent a region in Gauteng at the National Assembly. The seat previously in the last election was 92,000 votes that you needed to get. So for you to participate and contest for a, a regional seat at the National Assembly for Gauteng, you need to get 15% of 92,000 uh, votes, which is the issue that uh, uh, those that have taken the matter to court feel this is uh, uh, prohibitive because the numbers are high. That's the argument mm -hmm. that they make. And then that issue is really is about the split between the, uh, the seats in yeah. the National Assembly. Uh, right now, as things stand, the, the Act says it must be 200 uh, 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 seats that represent provinces in the National Assembly, and the other 200 must be compensatory seats only contested by political parties. Remember, the National Assembly has got 400 seats. Yeah. So 400 seats, of the 400 seats, 200 must be contested only by political parties, and 200 must be contested by political parties and independent candidates. Now, the issue that people have taken to court is that uh, at least that number should increase, or the, the disparities should, uh, should change from 200, 200 to 50, 350. 350 become the regional seats in the National Assembly, mm and the 50 becomes the uh, compensatory seats or the seats contested only by political parties in the National Assembly. Now, as if you look at that, it has no bearing on uh, our work as the IC, mm -hmm. because all it means is that the numbers would have changed if yeah. one party wins. If, the, if nobody wins, then the numbers yeah. remain the same. So nothing changes for us. We are ready. Very interesting indeed. We are looking forward to that one as it uh, you know develops. But I want us to park it there. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we'll look at uh, the preparation of the IC as we are gearing up for the 2024 elections. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We're still joined in by the IEC's uh, Peter Moses now just to talk about uh, uh, the, the state of readiness as IEC in Houting as we are gearing up to the 2024 elections. Uh, Mr. Puto, thanks very much for uh, taking the time and joining us also uh, staying on. I want us to just look at, you know, the introduction of the third ballot in uh, next year's elections. Uh, why is that? How, how different is this? compared to the previous years that we had uh, as a country? No, it's different in the sense that previously we had two ballot papers during national and provincial elections. So one ballot paper was for the National Assembly, the other ballot paper was for the provincial legislatures. Now we have a third ballot paper now. The first ballot paper, remember, said the National Assembly has got 400 seats. Mm -hmm. So one f first ballot paper will be for 200 of those 400 seats at the National Assembly, which is contested only by political parties. 
The second ballot paper will be for the other 200 in the National Assembly, which is contested by both political parties and independent candidates. Now your 400 seats is covered at National Assembly. And then the third ballot will be for the provincial legislatures. So you'll have a ballot for Gauteng Legislature, Cape Town, Western Cape mm -hmm. uh, Legislature, Limpopo, and so forth. And so you'll have one ballot paper for those legislatures. That ballot paper is contested by both political parties and independent candidates. Mm -hmm. So three, one is for provinces, one is for uh, uh, political parties in the National Assembly alone, and the other one is for political parties and independent candidates in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you know, over the years we've seen um, just the morale of young people, just voter apathy, if I may put it that way. A lot of young people are, should I say, demoralized, or, 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 but I want to understand what are the numbers looking like in terms of registration of young people looking at the previous elections, uh, because we saw that the numbers somewhere, somehow went down a bit. Look, uh, uh, the biggest chunk of our voters' role is uh, uh, the people between uh, 29 and uh, 49. So ordinarily those people would be uh, the group that you, you, are, you would argue that they are still uh, youth. Yeah. And uh, when they register, they vote. The only challenge that we still have is really, uh, uh, you know, those uh, youngsters that are between 19 and 25, you know, people are still finding their footing around there. However, this is a phenomenon that is not only a challenge for the IEC. It's a national phenomenon yeah. that if you, for instance, go to universities, you'll realize that the voter turnout there in SRC elections is bad. Yeah. You know, at times it would be like 13%, 25%. So that's a challenge for all of us as, as South Africans to really uh, engage with this democracy, particularly this cohort of, uh, of uh, South Africans that are the future of this country that they need to start taking uh, responsibility of uh, the future of their country. Because if they don't, other people will. And chances are that they, would, they might uh, uh, be having complaints all the time because they see their issues not being addressed by maybe government or political parties or independent candidates that are in government. And that would be precisely because those people may not know what the issues are because when they uh, submit their manifestos to say this is the reasons if, if these are the things that I'm going to do if you vote for me, they don't participate. You see, so that's the difficulty. Mm. So you cannot uh, uh, argue for uh, a benefit that you are not prepared to wait uh, to work for. So if South Africans, and particularly the youth, they want to see this country prosper, they need to uh, themselves take charge of their future and one of the ways of them taking charge of their future over and above any other uh, many other things that they've got to uh, you know to deal uh, to deal with as the youth is to vote and show that they vote for uh, the leadership or political uh, uh, or a government that represents their interests as the youth mm. i mean uh, our sister country zimbabwe recently had elections um you know we saw a lot of issues coming out of that country, uh, the issues of uh, irregularities, ballot papers arriving late, uh, stations either not opening uh, in time, some even, you know, had to be closed and then had to be opened during the middle of the night. Um, how do you as the SA, I mean IEC, ensure that, uh, you know, we do not face the same issues, you know, the same situations whereby you would find that uh, there are ballot boxes uh, ballot papers that are actually dumped somewhere or either a, a car has been hijacked? Look, as the IC, we do uh, things uh, such as in preparation for an electoral project, we do dry runs. For instance, this weekend, the, in, uh, on Saturday, we'll be doing dry runs. We're going to send all of our, our staff to be at each and every voting station in the, in the province, but, uh, which is 2,799. In each and every one, are going to be standing there with our uh, uh, what you call the the VMDs or, yeah. or the, the voter management uh, uh, machines that we are, we are going to be utilizing during uh, registration and elections, so so that we test that in fact uh, our system can speak to those 2,799 voting stations. So we are going to do a dry run this Saturday. However. Uh, on 18 and 19, as uh, you alluded to, we're going to be registering people. So all of those stations are going uh, to be opened 
that also assists us to see if our systems are able to carry mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the network is able to carry all the voting stations open uh, uh, at the same time. Even though the focus on the day would be for registering people, but it also assist us in preparations to ensure that by the time we go to elections, or we are we, we are certain that uh, our uh, computer systems are able to carry the load of all voting stations in the country. So that's the one thing. The other thing in terms of uh, the issues of transparency at voting stations, we, <laughs> I'm sure you are aware that there would be uh, observers international and local observers at voting station to make sure that they observe if the process is undertaken the way it should. But not only that, political parties also, and in this instance, independent candidates as well, are allowed to send their own uh, uh, party agents or agents, this time we call them agents because yeah. they're both for political parties and independent candidates. They're able to send their agents as their representatives at the voting stations to make sure that they observe that uh, the, proce the uh, processes as undertaken by the IC are above board. So these issues around uh, you know vote rigging and people not accepting the results at the you know at the end of uh, uh, voting, yeah. we don't have that challenge in the in the IC or in the country because our elections are not run only by ourselves. We are running our elections with our partners, including political parties, including uh, local uh, uh, what you call local uh, uh, media. They also are allowed at voting stations, including uh, observers locally and international observers. Mr. Moses, I want us to park it there. We will uh, conclude the conversation after the ad break. Do you stay with us. We are concluding on the other side of this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are about to wrap up the conversation. The IEC's uh, Pito uh, Moses is joining us now just to, uh, you know, look at the state of readiness uh, in terms of the organization ahead of the 2024 general elections. Mr. Moses, uh, you know, you spoke about just over 2,700 uh, stations, uh, you know, but I wanted to look at the numbers now and how in, in terms of training, uh, you know, of the officials, how, I, I mean, where are we? Um, uh, the, the registrations are coming soon. Obviously, you know, uh, you guys are actually on your toes when it comes to that. Yes, indeed. I think, like I say, we are almost at 100% in training uh, staff that will be working at, uh, at the registration stations because on the day of registration, those voting stations are called registration stations. Yeah. There'll be three people working on, on those at uh, those registration stations, and all of them have been trained. So of the 2,799 voting stations, each and everyone will have uh, three uh, uh, people registering. But also, <coughs> there's also the issue of uh, uh, for, uh, people asking to be visited for registration in their homes or at their old age homes. Yeah. The IC is also going to be uh, ensuring that we also go to old age homes, to uh, people's homes that, uh, that have requested, you know, for the IC to come and register them in their homes. We're going to be doing that. So that's really as in, 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 in terms of uh, us, our preparations for, uh, for the registration weekend of 18 and 19. But remember, Gauteng uh, uh, has the biggest chunk of the voters' role. Mm. And uh, uh, Jobek, uh, as uh, you are in, uh, in Jobek here, uh, of the six million, more than six million voters that are registered in this province to vote, two million of them are in, in Jobek Metro. So uh, the, the, what will be happening in Jobek Metro will be happening throughout the country. But yeah, like I say, as Gauteng, you have the biggest chunk of the voters' role in the country. Mm. The issue of digital migration, I mean, we're seeing, you know, um, quite... Um, a lot of people on social media expressing their views and stuff. The IEC previously used a lot of young people, uh, you know, to law in voters, uh, social media posts, be it Facebook, now it's, it's X, it's no longer Twitter, but, uh, you know, TikTok videos and all these kind of things, you would have ads also uh, on television. Uh, in terms of social media, um, you know, are, are you going to woo quite a lot of people uh, with uh, the different uh, ad campaigns that are going to be happening? Yes, indeed. Remember, as you said, the elections is launched tomorrow. Yeah. Now, all of those things will then be uh, answered tomorrow uh, during the launch. The strategies that are going to be utilized and are we going to engage with the youth over and above what we are doing now. Because remember, currently we have employed a number of youth 
as uh, field workers to go into communities and engage their contemporaries around uh, registering and voting, which is they're providing what we call vote education. But generally, <coughs> because they speak up, they uh, teach about just about everything, is civic education, just to capacitate their contemporaries out there to make sure that they are able to engage with our democratic dispensation constructively. So yes, tomorrow there will be the announcements uh, over, uh, over and above what we are doing now, but there will be uh, uh, announcements as to what the IC then will be doing on social media, on commercial media, on com uh, community media, so that uh, everybody uh, as the IC we reach as many people as we possibly can. Just lastly, before I let you go, um, I mean, in the long run, uh, is it the plan of the IEC maybe to get uh, to, uh, your, you know, your programs to schools? Uh, maybe you start at primary level, start educating these young people about the essence of uh, the X, if I may put it that way, uh, primary, uh, high school. I know that uh, most, most of them, they become active when it comes to uh, tertiary, I mean tertiary level in universities, we see officials there during SRC elections, but in high schools normally it's just a show of hands, we're voting for a prefect, that's it. Um, uh, is it something that uh, in the long run you'll be able to take uh, stock, I mean not stock of, I mean, uh, are you going to be able to do it in the long run or is it in the pipeline? No, it's something that we've been doing all along. Yeah. Yes, we have, uh, as we speak right now, we have uh, our staff members uh, in schools uh, during their life orientation as, uh, uh, periods that where they provide civic education, they provide vote education, and there's some that is ongoing. But uh, 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 early in every year, during the month of March, we try to uh, you know, uh, highlight the project around uh, school democracy week. We just go into schools and provide uh, uh, just to give you know uh, further emphasis there to people that they must know that we are at schools uh, throughout the year and we've been doing that for years in fact we're in partnership with the department of basic education mm. in this project mr moses thanks very much i hope to have you probably in january or february as soon as you're done with everything just to get the numbers because you would have uh, been done with uh, you know the registrations and stuff as we look ahead to the elections but i would like to have you back on the show just to give us a few things but thanks for coming no, thank you very much and just lastly make sure that you register before uh, proclamation date when the president announces the date of elections and that date is proclaimed and you are not registered you will not be able to vote next year you can do. You can register yourself online on your on your mobile uh, mobile phone, or you can do it at our uh, IC uh, offices that are, that are open uh, five days a week, or visit our registration week uh, uh, stations on 18 and 19 to go and register or update your details. Make sure that when the date is called, you are ready. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you so much. That was uh, Independent Electoral Commission's uh, Peter Moses. They're just talking to us about their state of readiness. Well, that's how we wrap it up for uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you want to get in touch with us, simply just give us a call. The number is uh, 081-531-8857. Or simply you can send us a, um, uh, you know, an email. It's Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Dot co dot ca. From myself, Tabo Mulukwani and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobal is up next with your primetime news. Until then, good night and thank you for watching.